Hi friends, this is Rachel Gregg and today I'd like to show you how to create a mail art envelope using stencils and stamps with a gel printing technique. The gel plate I'm using today is one of the new Ranger gel plates. This size comes in an assortment pack with three different sizes. The one that I'm using measures 5.5 inches by 11 inches, which is approximately 14 centimeters by 28 centimeters. It's sized perfectly for gel printing size 12 tags, but it's also great for the envelope that I'm using today. I'm using Dina Wakely Media Paint to lay down some color on the gel plate. The colors I'm using are olive and buff. You don't need a lot of paint to create a gel print, so I've only squeezed out the tiniest amount in a few different areas on the gel plate before spreading out the paint with the brayer. The two colors will mix together a bit as you're brayering. Once the paint is spread evenly, I'm ready to make my first print. I want to create some more interest though by adding in some small stencils. I'm using the small butterfly stencil by Darkroom Door and I'm laying the stencils down onto the gel plate so they will mask off some of that first layer of paint. Once I worked out where to place them, I just place them down onto the gel plate. They cling really easily so they'll just stay in place. I'm now adding some extra color over the top, this time using the Peacock and Sedona colors, also by Dina Waper Media. Again, this paint layer is just a thin layer and when it's spread out, I'll then place the envelope onto the gel plate and add just a little bit of um, scrap paper so I can rub over the plate without getting any paint on the back of the envelope. So just make sure to rub over the whole envelope so you get good coverage. Lift off the envelope and there's your first print. And you can see where the stencils have masked the paint and if I take the stencils off the gel plate it will reveal the first layer of paint where the butterflies were. Now I can use that to go back and make another print to fill in the butterflies. Now I want to work on the back of the envelope and I'll do the same process using the buff and olive paint colours but this time I'm not going to add in any stencils. I'm just going to do a simple gel print. And as my gel plate has some leftover dried paint from previous projects, some of this may be reactivated from the new layer of wet paint, so I could get some of that old paint coming off, which will just add to the random arty feel of the envelope. And I'm taking care when pulling off this side of the envelope so I don't wreck the flap that's on the back of the envelope. Now I want to add in some stamping, and I'm starting with the Splatter Texture Stamp by Darkroom Door. I'm inking it up with a leaf green archival ink by Ranger and randomly stamping around the edges and other areas of the envelope. This is a great way to fill in any lighter areas of the gel print and the splatter stamp is a perfect design for this as it gives the effect of ink or paint splats but you can actually control exactly where it goes. I'm not using an acrylic block so it means I can bend the stamp and only stamp smaller sections if I want to. Next I want to add a little label for the address, so I'm using a tag stamp from the tag stamp set by Darkroom Door. This set has lots of different size tags in three different styles. There's circles, regular shipping style tags and a little scallop tag. I'm using the medium size shipping tag, but the larger shipping tag stamp is also really great for mail art too. I'm stamping it with jet black archival ink so it stands out on the envelope. Now I want to add some borders around the envelope, so I'm using the stitched borders stamps from Darkroom Door. These stamps are 6 inches long, so they go across a card front easily. But this envelope I'm using here is 5 by 7 inches, so I need to stamp the border a second time just to fill in that extra length. As you can see, it's really easy to do. Now I'm just picking a different style stitch stamp just to do the back of the envelope and I'm using the leaf green archival ink just so that it's not too bold on the front and the back of the envelope but it still goes with the paint that I used. I wanted to add some extra random stamping and this time I'm using the French script texture stamp with jet black archival ink. This is one of my favorite stamps as the script is small and subtle but just adds that finishing touch and is especially perfect for a mail art correspondence theme.
And next I want to add in some small stamped images. So I'm using the Mail Art Stamp Set by Darkroom Door, which is full of different words and images and an address plate, all perfect for mail art. I'm using the Air Mail Stamp and stamping it right next to the postage stamp. I put the postage stamp on the envelope so I knew how much space it would take up and to make sure I didn't stamp over it or around it. The Mail Art Stamp Set also has a small to and from stamps that you can add to the envelopes and they're also useful to make your own gift tags too. But here I'm just stamping it above the tag where the address will be. And now I just want to add in some postmarks but I want to steer clear of the actual postage stamp so the post office doesn't think it's already been cancelled. So I'm stamping it on the bottom left side. I'm using the postmark from the Sydney stamp set. And this stamp set also has a G'day from Australia stamp in it, so I couldn't resist adding that stamp to the back of the envelope. And I decided I wanted a third postmark, so I stamped another one on the right side, just above the stamped tag. And now it's all finished and ready to address and send in the mail. And since the ink pads and acrylic paint I used are permanent, there shouldn't be any issues of it messing up through the postal system. But if you were concerned about that, you could give it a quick spray with a fixative. And when I know who I'm going to send this to, I'll just write the address in a tag label with a paint pen or a permanent fine tip marker. It's so much fun to send and receive decorated envelopes in the mail and by using the gel plates it's so easy to create some arty looking envelopes that will all be unique. I hope you'll give it a go and if you'd like to see more ideas please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also see lots of ideas on my website which is rachelgregg.com along with inspiration and tutorials on the Darkroom Door blog at darkroomdoor.com Thanks so much for watching.